Hi, BookTube. This is Juan from Just One Reader, and this is another Friday Reads video in which I will talk about the books that I have been reading this week and what I will possibly, probably start reading the following week. Um, so this week, I have to say, has not been the most productive for my reading, just because I've had some other things going on. Um, I've been watching a lot of opera, listening to a lot of opera, um, and operatic singers doing interviews. That's something that I really enjoy, and I just sort of fell into a operatic rabbit hole this week. Um, I've also been watching some TV, which, uh, you know, it's something that I've always enjoyed, but... Um, so last weekend, I binge-watched, I binged, uh, two shows from uh, the streaming service uh, Apple TV+. Plus. Uh, the Morning Show, which was sort of very silly if you really think about it, but it was addictive and I would watch a thousand seasons of that. And then I also binged uh, Servant, which is absolutely incredible. It was it blew my mind, one of the best shows that I've watched in, in recent years. So, um, you know, I, I did that, I had a lot of fun, but my reading sort of fell a little bit um, on the wayside. Um, but I did read, I did read a lot, and um, most of what I read was, of course, The Mirror and the Light. I am still reading this. Um, this is a long book, but more than the length, it's a very complex book. It is historical fiction, which is something that I don't usually read very much of, and it's it's complicated because of that and because I I don't know any of this history. So this is completely new to me, but it's not only that, it's, I, I think it, it, it doesn't even have to do with that. It has to do, my problem or my um, struggle with this book is more because of the way that the storytelling works, the nature of the storytelling, of Hilary Mantel's storytelling. Essentially, I feel like uh, the book is very tiresome. It's very long. It feels long. It feels feels heavy, it feels complicated, it also feels impossible as an achievement. Like, I cannot really understand how a human being used words and, and crafted this, because it, it is like an impossible feat of artistry and of writing, and it's very formidable. It's, it's formidable, and um, it's something that I feel I appreciate and value more than I enjoy. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I am not enjoying it. Actually, um, in my latest video in which I was talking about this book and how difficult I am finding it, uh, someone someone commented something great uh, in the comment section because they said, why are you doing this? Like, why, why, if it's so hard and so apparently unenjoyable, why are you doing it? And that was a great comment. It actually made me think a lot and I was reflecting on this. And yeah, it, 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 it probably sounds like I am really not, not enjoying this book, but I am. The thing is, it's the kind of enjoyment or the kind of fun that is not really fun once you do it or once you are doing it. It's once you have reached a certain level in the book and you look back and everything starts falling into place, and then it's like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing, Hilary Mantel, well played, it was good. And then, of course, even though the book is very laborious, and sometimes I just feel like, please get on with it, then there will come a, a, a paragraph or an entire chapter or a, a few pages, a piece of writing that will blow my socks off. Um, and that's really what I what I am doing with reading this book is finding those jewels, those pearls. So um, I did actually read quite a lot of this this week. Um, the thing is, this book is humongously large. Um, so I read like 300 pages of this in one week, and I really hope I finish it next week. But yeah, that's The Mirror and the Light. And then I also started reading the diary of a bookseller by Sean Bythel. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is absolutely perfection. I know this is gonna be a five-star read for me, probably because um, even though I've only read 36 pages of it, 
it is absolutely a Juan book. It's a book for me. It's about books. It's about book selling. But it's so much more than that. It really feels like um, it follows uh, or it um, it's giving me what I loved from the Bookshop book by Jen Campbell, Weird Things Customers Say in Bookstores, also by Jen Campbell, which is, you know, it's a book that I read last week. Um, and uh, some other books that are very, very bookish, very like Helene Hamph as well with uh, 84 Charing Cross Road. So this is giving me some of those vibes. It's sarcastic and dry a little bit mean-spirited, which is absolutely my cup of tea in books. Um, and it's nonfiction. It's sort of a memoir. Um, you can read it very episodically because it's it's a journal. These are It's a diary, the diary of a bookseller. So it's um, journal entries. And so you can read a few of them and then go back and read something else, maybe something really complicated, and then come back to this and... Uh, sighing with relief. So um, I am still going to be reading this next week. And whenever I finish either one of those, I will start reading P.G. Woodhouse's. Um, so I have these big book, which is a, a collection of uh, stories and novels and different materials about uh, Blanding's Castle, which is one of the universes created by P.G. Woodhouse. Um, I have read everything in this book except one novel which I'm still missing and that one is Heavy Weather. So that is the last entry in this beautiful book. It's it's a longer novel um, considering that it's P.G. Woodhouse it's a little bit on the longer side it's around 300 and something pages but you know P.G. Woodhouse is always fun, it's light, it's charming, it is gorgeously written, the, the, the writing style is so sophisticated but, but so um, effervescent and it's, it's exactly what I think I will need, especially after reading this. This is like very, very, these are almost um, like they're, they're so opposite, you know, they're, they're, they're very different. So I really need something on the lighter side. And that's what I will be reading next week. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Please let me know in the comment section down below um, any of your thoughts, especially regarding the mirror and the light. Um, I don't know how many people are actually reading this book. This feels like a publishing event and, and it is you know it's probably go going to win the booker again um hillary mantel is probably hopefully going to win three for three that would be amazing um and i actually really hope that she does because even though this is not exactly my kind of storytelling or my kind of book really um it's astonishing and i really hope that she wins i really hope that she wins everything i mean it's it's not the kind of book that you that you encounter nowadays. Uh, it's it feels very unconventional in many re regards, um, which you know, um, in, in terms of how unconventional this book is. I think my favorite book in the series will be uh, "Bring Up the Bodies," even though I mean I still can't really say because I haven't finished this. But uh, Bring Up the Bodies, which was the second book in the trilogy, really felt much more conventional. And that's why I loved it so much. That's also why people um, maybe prefer something like this or something like Wolf Hall, which are uh, far less conventional. So, um, yeah, that's what I think so far. Anyway, thanks for joining me and I look forward to having a conversation with you.